Yo, it's Eric D. Just stopped by to tell y'all I had a little extra time to work on the uh, mini bike. And I uh, just wanted to show y'all what I was up to. I think I'm gonna try to show y'all how I'm gonna tear it down and stretch it. I wanna put a um, 10 inch stretch in the frame. And uh, you know, put some nice wheels on it and uh, make it a nice ride bike, you know. And uh, she's in pretty good shape, so of course, we're gonna get rid of that uh, Baja 97cc motor on there. And uh, I got a brand new Predator in the box, I gotta tear that down. Add a little horsepower to her and uh, I'll show y'all how to I'll see if I can tear this down and uh, get started on this thing. Um, most, most of it's pretty simple, just a lot of nuts and bolts. Some are either 10, 12, 15, standard size. It was pretty easy to tear down. Loosen this motor up a little bit. Take that out. Probably move, end up moving the motor mount back. Once we cut it up a little bit. Get the tensioner out of the way. I probably end up putting a spring loaded one on there. I like the spring loaded ones to hold up a little better at faster speeds. Wheel axles are uh, 18 millimeter and 15 millimeter on the doodle bugs. She's coming apart pretty easy. I gotta cut some wire ties. Fenders out of the way. I try to save everything, bag up uh, all my nuts and bolts, and mark them. Cause uh, it'll save you money. When you use them, use them again. When you're trying to build something. Shoot, nuts and bolts are expensive. Get this fork out of the way too. I'm gonna put some new forks on it. I think I'm gonna use the, uh, they got some gas power forks or shocks set up. I've seen a lot of guys are using. So we might do that. Save all these bolts and 
the washers. It's amazing how many shims they use from the factory to get all this stuff to line up. Get this back fender out of the way. Always save these rubber bushings. They come in handy. Especially you you don't want to hear anything rattling down the road. Now we're gonna start cutting. I just measured the uh, center of the axle axle hole. And uh, what you want to do is find the flattest or straightest part of the pipe to cut it so you know everything to line up and I kind of figured three inches from the wheel axle hole on these brackets and three inches down was the straightest part of the frame. So you'll find the straight straightest part of the frame. And uh, assuming everything lines up from the factory, you should be pretty close as far as being even on both sides. And, uh, under the seat bracket, Kind of measured three inches again. It seemed like that was the straightest part of the frame. About three inches away, so that was good. With the same numbers, it's easy to remember. The seat brackets are inch wide, so it's pretty easy to measure. It's a half inch. They line you up right with the center hole. That way you know everything's gonna be straight. Let me start cutting. Make everything a little easier to line up. Just cut both sides. After you measure. Same. Measure twice, cut once. I try to measure shoot, five, six times. <laughs> Everything look, looks like it's gonna line up, so making my cuts. And, uh, make it a whole lot easier when we start welding too. Top cut, three inches from the bar, seat bar. We're almost there. We're going too far to go back now. Cut up a perfectly good mini cut. Good. It makes up cool down. You can kind of imagine how stretched it's going to be. An eight inch stretch. I'm going to make a 10 inch sleeve and put that inside the eight inch stretch. So that made one inch is sticking in each end of the two. That way you got something nice to weld to. Strong vibe. That's what it's all about. Strong vibe. So, there you have it. 
kind of imaginate right there. See how far it's gonna be. Mind you, the back wheel's gonna be pushed back too. Y'all next time, we'll do some welding.